I'm going to be distracted watching this. How could I? How could I? You're going to be looking at us. Don't worry about it. Look at these mugs. Look at these mugs instead. Um, hey, guys. We are another <laughs> idea. We definitely what are can't we, start like that. We are another idea. We're a podcast for creatives and entrepreneurs who all want to level up their business. Yeah. And what if, do we do, Igor? If you're here for the first time, welcome. And hopefully, not hopefully. I don't care if you're here for the first time. If you're, if you're here <laughs> for the multiple times, you need to just give us a bit of love and just do the sharing stuff, don't you? Yeah, they? all the clicking to stuff. Yeah. Um, which have been for like, a nice little walk, haven't we? Yeah. Just to... We've done a couple of recordings already today, and and I just said to everybody, I was like, let's just get out of the studio for twenty minutes. <laughs> the sun is shining. Get... What? Well, well, I don't know if they call it this down south, but we went for a yomp, didn't we? Went for a little yomp. That's I don't know Sheffield about thing, that. isn't it? Right, Helen? Never heard of that. No, you're on your own. Yomp. You're on your yomp own is here. like a, just a little march, nah, nah, basically. Nah. <laughs> so we went for a little walk around the that. park, didn't we? The sun was shining. <laughs> the weather was. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was great. Last nice time. But here we are. We are here. What, what do you want to talk about? What, what am I doing something wrong? No, no, no. You no just, you're, not. you're making me I'm feel just, very on edge. I, I, I'm just waiting for you to kind of like kick, kick it off. But oh, okay, can... yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've got Grace, um, Grace Andrews here today. Yes, indeed. Who has come up from London. Thank you very much, Grace. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for having me in Welcome. sunny Derbyshire. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you, you run a channel called The Social Climber. I do. Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit about social media stuff today, aren't we? Um, and I think you work on a little podcast with the guy called Stephen, don't you? Is that right? I do indeed. Yeah. How's that going? It's all right. Is he doing all right? Yeah, it's all right. A couple. Does couple he smell hits. as good as he looks? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Because he looks like he smells really good. I've been asked all sorts of questions about him, but I've never <laughs> been asked that. But he will love that. He's probably yeah. going to clip that. And he looks like he's got. He looks like he's got a really good fragrance, like a. You know Tom what? Ford, Tom he, Ford vibe. He's the I'm type that with. like will just go with whatever's there. He's not fussed about all that sort of thing. He, yeah, he'll take what's there, run with it. As long as he's showered, we're all happy. Yeah, good, good. Is that all right? Is that what you? Is that what you wanted? <laughs> was that the intro was you were going for? <laughs> Definitely not. I was Definitely really, not. I was really on edge there. I was no. like, what's he looking? Have I done something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, no, what's but happened? I feel like we've got royalty in the house. Grace, you have been able to do uh, some incredible stuff, obviously with Stephen Bartlett, through the direct CEO, being the head of content there. And yeah, just diving into doing research into you and everything else. You are going places. You're doing incredible stuff. Where are you going? Everywhere. Back to London. Everywhere. Back to London Everywhere. Oh, you meant right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with Everywhere. you. I'm with you. Speaking at events and everything else. So um, just tell me about you and your journey, how you started, started with... Um, your sort of like creative journey in general. So yeah. Start at the beginning. Yeah, go for it. Very Stephen Bartlett approach of you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your childhood. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for having me on here. It's such a pleasure. First time in Derby, so it's a very exciting experience. Um, but yeah, a little bit about me. So I guess going back a few years, I, um, I studied history at Nottingham University, which is just down the road. It's nice to be up in the in the ends again. And, you know, I left that having no idea what I wanted to do. I, I only did history at uni because I loved my history teacher at school and I was told I had to go to university. So I just <laughs> what, pieced two things what together. A, what a reason to go and do a degree. I had, no, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I went to a, you know, I went to a very good school and I was very much pushed in one direction, which good and a bad thing and I ended up with a degree at the end of it a great degree and everyone went so what are you going to do now and I had didn't have a clue did not have a clue didn't love anything about history I just did it for the sake of it um everyone was going oh so you're going to be a teacher and I went am I I was like, please god say no yeah. because I am not that's not my game that's not my ball um and so I I left that and I applied for every grad job under the sun and everyone rejected me because I had no idea what I wanted to do and I was just doing these waffly applications and I didn't have any direction. Um, and then we went, I went traveling for a bit. I managed to get an internship somewhere after about 50 rejections um, at a marketing agency. Um, I didn't think I wanted to do marketing. I just wanted to get money to go traveling. So that was kind of messy early twenties, but gained loads of really fun things out of it. And then it got to a point where I said, I remember I turned to my dad, I'd done a bit of traveling, I'd come back, I'd done some internships, I'd come back. And I turned to my dad and I said, I think I wanna do journalism. 
And he said, well, why don't you? Like, what's stopping you? And I was like, well, I think I was about 23. And I and his, I said, well, I've missed my boat now, haven't I? Like, I've, <laughs> I've done my education piece. <laughs> 23. 23. Done. I was like, there's no... I remember so clearly we were, we were out on holiday and I said, well, I've missed the chance to do a master's and I have to do a master's to get qualified as in journalism, blah, blah, blah. So, um, and he said, he literally shook me and he was like, you could be 50 years old and I tell you the same thing. Just yeah. go and do what you want to do. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And I've always had that lovely encouragement around me, which is, you know, such a blessing and something I'm always grateful for. And so I went off, did this journalism degree, um, journalism master's. It's like a part-time studying thing. You have to get qualified to be able to go anywhere. So it's like almost, almost like a qualification. Yeah. Did you go back to uni at 23? Went back to uni. It was part-time in London. So okay. it was a very different experience, kind of just living at home, commuting in almost, but just not getting paid at the other end, paying to be there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, did that, finished just as the pandemic was kicking off and work experience ceased to be a thing because you couldn't go in and get it. So there's a whole degree, everything I've been building up to ceased to be relevant because I couldn't gain anything from it. And to break into any industry, especially into journalism, you have to do that work experience piece. So I was, you know, pulling my hair out. I've, you know, I thought I had all this direction in the world. I thought I knew exactly what I wanted to do at 23 or 24 and um <laughs> and yeah they came out and the world shut down uh, around us as we all experienced and I thought well I'm gonna have to find a way to make my own work experience because if I'm not being able to gain it through all these other traditional platforms I need to find a way to make it happen for myself and that was where the social climber was born because actually I'd studied during my journalism degree social media journalism specifically um, obviously how we get all of our notifications through all of our apps and Twitter and all of that, how we get news through social media. Um, and I basically said, well, if I'm gonna create my own work experience, I'm gonna create my own portfolio so that when the world does open up, when the doors do open up, I've got all of this amazing stuff ready to show them. Yeah. So I started yeah. making my own news videos. I created TikToks. I put them all on LinkedIn. I just didn't really care. And people always say like, God, you're so brave to just chuck it all out there. And I just really didn't think twice about it. I just thought that's going to be my way to get in. So I just started doing that. I, I think probably helped by the pandemic and all the depressing news, I managed to strip away from the news section of social media and just go into social media. And I started helping out small businesses during the pandemic who needed help with their social media platforms um, because I could provide that skill when everyone was out helping out and doing things. And I was living at home. I, you know, I didn't, I wasn't luckily paying any rent. So I was in quite like a, a nice position to be able to help out and do other things. And then slowly from there, I started to build up my experience um, helping all sorts of different businesses, wonderful, weird businesses, local, large. Um, and I started to build up my experience with social media, everything from creating content to strategizing, to researching, to all of that sort of thing. And I really did see it as, as what I wanted to go and do. I was the ball was rolling with the freelancing. I'd started to turn kind of pro bono clients, which I did at first, which I think is super normal. And we need to normalize a bit more that sometimes yeah. you have to put that graft in at first. Come it's not, on, so well it's, said. It, um, well, it's not all, it doesn't all get given to you on a plate. And mm. I have to really, really draw this in when I, I go and do so many talks now to graduates or university students. I'm actually going back to my school, which is going to be a bizarre experience. And I say, you know, don't be afraid of that graft. In those early days, it might be short, it might be long, but you're gonna have to put in that graft. And I did the free work. I started building up the paid clients, doing like 200 pounds a month, which makes me cringe now because you should be charging about 10 times that for the, social, the stuff yeah. I was offering. Um, but that's okay. You live and you learn. And then I was like loving freelancing, starting to build up a good, you know, monthly, uh, monthly clients and monthly rates and the money was coming in. It was all lovely. And then this job appeared on LinkedIn. And this was Stephen Bartlett, but Stephen Bartlett rewind three years. So unless you yeah. work in social media, no dragons den, no dragons den, no no diary of a CEO really, no happy sex millionaire his book, no you know nothing. Unless you are in the social media world, you probably haven't heard of him. That's the only way I can describe it. I, but I was in the social media world. I knew he'd had this business called Social Chain in Manchester. It was one of the most innovative social media marketing agencies Massive. at the time. Huge, super cool. They had a slide in their office. Um, <laughs> I wanted to oh, work damn there. it, where's my slide? <laughs> um, so I was Merlo, working. we need a slide. <laughs> okay, instead of the stairs on the way back yeah. down. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Straight out the window. Um, and, I, and I just said like, uh, well, I, I wasn't looking, which I think is always the case. I wasn't yeah, yeah. looking for anything. This job popped up and it said, oh, hey, I'm looking for a social media manager. Yeah. And I thought, and I honestly, then and to this day, three years in, I still genuinely believe that that, how do I describe this? <laughs> we can cut this out. Uh, <laughs> no, I, and I, I still genuinely saw it as a, as a learning opportunity. Yeah. I didn't see it as a job. I saw 
I saw me where I was there in my early days of social media and I thought I can climb the ladder. I'll get there, I'll do what I wanna do. Maybe one day I'll start my own agency and start bringing people in. Or I can tenfold that and jump to the highest rung on the ladder kind of within a year under his guise because he's done it all already. Yeah. And I saw, I saw that job and I, within 10 minutes had applied because same way we hire now, three bullet points off I, off I sent them to work at Stephen Bartlett. And- Was it literally like that? It was, it was three bullet points. Yeah. I mean, don't ask me to pull them up now. <laughs> um, I did for one talk, someone asked me and I said, I've never said this before, but I'll tell you what they were. And I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was as silly as, I just wanted to show personality and also um, show that I was committed and I would start tomorrow because I had that flexibility. And something in it, I. I don't know where I sound on the I don't think you can be embarrassed by what you said because it clearly worked. Oh so, no, it was so cringe. You know. <laughs> it was like, I will take you for, but, I'll show you the best brunch spots in Shoreditch to Stephen brilliant. Bartlett. There do you know go. what I mean? But like, that's, like, that's attention grabbing though, it, isn't it? Exactly, it's different, it's just, personality. Yes, um, I mean, mate, also uh, just like, just to go back to the point at which yeah, you saw yeah. that advert, like you, you could have, like a lot of people just gone, nah, I'm not, I'm not there yet or I'm not capable of it. You, you kind of like recognize an opportunity and you yeah. acted on it. And I think so many, so many times in, 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 in our lives or our careers, sometimes you've just got to grab the ball and just give it a so. shot. And what's the worst that could happen? I think, really, that's, I think that's what I saw. I saw, I'm not, I don't lose anything. I'm loving what I'm doing. I'm freelancing. I'm not looking. I think it's very different when you're looking for that job and you're sitting on your inbox every day, refreshing, looking for those those emails and it's rejection after rejection. It's a very different state of mind. Yep. Whereas I was, in a state of, I was in a state of mind where it didn't matter. It didn't matter if it came through, if I ever got a response, if I ever heard back or it didn't. But I don't know where I stand on the manifestation line, but there is something that when I saw that and when I sent that off, I, I just knew. And that's mm. so crazy because I know since there were a silly amount of applications, as imagine. you can imagine. But I... I was going to make it happen. So I didn't stop. I, I think I waited about a day and then the next day I found his manager um, who's now, I work with every day. I've worked with every day since. <laughs> I love this. I found him on LinkedIn and I went, I just, I did everything I could to ensure I'd given it my best shot because something in me said, this is an opportunity. This is, there's something in this. And um, I messaged him and I said like, look, I will, I imagine you've got a million trillion applications. I know you're probably super busy. What can I do to make your life easier? Can like, can I come in for a coffee? Can we go for a chat? I'm available today, I'm available tomorrow. I will start whenever you need me because I I understood and it's something that I, that I would say to a lot of kind of younger people looking at that stage of application. People are so busy. They're getting so many emails. What can you do to make their lives easier? I always say that to, to people, just assume they're super, super busy mm. and Obviously, what can you what value can you add so I said can I do a task like can I do a task so you just have it in front of you and you can see what I can do I was just trying to push every kind of door open possible so that I gave myself my best shot and I think that's the point though isn't it you've given yourself the very best shot because there would have been mm. countless people in that process that will have gone right yeah yeah per, yeah okay that's no that's that's what they're going to want to hear so I'm going to say that and then I'm going to send it and I'm going to wait yeah. And I'm going to tell people I've applied for this job at yeah. Steel Art Let. And I'm going to wait. I'm going to keep waiting. Twiddle my thing, twiddle my hands. You did yeah. the opposite. opposite. You yeah, I don't know what it, it was. There was something in me. I was I was desperate. Anyway, so I got, the, he goes, I think about a couple of hours later, he was like, hey, yeah, we're actually in Mexico at the moment. I mean, it sums up my life ever since. <laughs> um, we're actually in Mexico at the moment. Do you want to hop on a call in like an hour? Um, we'd love to, like, I'd love to have a chat. And knowing Dom now, he is the, the most laid back chilled person you'll ever meet in your life. So just everything added up, like everything made sense. And he was like, are you available ASAP? You've, task looks good. Like your bullet points, we get on on the call, let's bring you in. And everyone we ever hire is very much like a, as bring you in, let's start and let's get going. Let's see if it works. And you know, we have probation period for a reason. And if it doesn't for you and for us, then we part ways. If it does, it really does. And we yeah. go in an amazing direction and that was, yeah, coming on for three years ago. Still there. And it's, it feels like yesterday. Yeah. It feels like yesterday. I mean, I think we should just clarify as well that at the start, even though we've, we've talked about Stephen, that wasn't really the reason why we asked you in. It was because we'd seen <laughs> Social Climber through um, Isabel Pearl, who came on the podcast recently. Yeah, yeah, and she yeah. was like, you need, to speak to, you need to speak to one of my friends, Grace, who does this Social oh. Climber. And then she mentioned about that. I was like, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But then, yeah, we've, we've obviously been following you on Social Climber. And, the, and it's really clear to see that you have a just this unbelievable passion for social media and marketing um and and given that you know we've talked about this off camera before we came on that that's really just a, a kind of a playground area for you it, like to do that as a what is ultimately something that you don't ultimately monetize yep. 
you know, just goes to show how how engaging and passionate you are about yeah. that industry. Um, and and Igor's got lots of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Is this going to turn into a consultancy? Because I didn't charge you guys. <laughs> yeah, we'll pay you, we'll pay you twenty quid. Twenty quid. Twenty quid for the month. Um, no, it was two hundred. It was two hundred pounds. Two hundred pounds a month. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So oh, we're we'll in the middle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but just before we go on from this point, like just to go back to that point, I think that what you talked about there, mm. I think is applies to so many industries. Yeah. You know, like we've talked about it in our industry, you know, it comes up time and time again. People go, oh God, I hate people under not charging enough or putting out their self, putting themselves out there for free because it then devalues the industry. No, it doesn't. Like sometimes you've just got to get your foot in the door. Yeah. And in order to do that, you have to, you have to offer yourself out at, yeah, at yeah. a lower rate or and free. And Exactly. And also you have one no one talks about it when you're starting out so no one talks about how much they're charging or what's right or what's wrong yep. so how can we have these expectations for everyone to bring each other up and not devalue the industry if no one's talking about how much they're charging that's the first point the second point is my work wasn't very good like i'll be totally honest mm. my work starting out i was trying things i was almost that's why i did pro bono to start with because i was grateful for these clients to allow me to do these experiments and try things out on their pages because that's their business at the end of the day mm. and that's their reputation it doesn't come back down to me so it's twofold and i think for sure once you're into it and once you're really well established look at your pricing and price yourself fairly and maybe let's start talking about it a little bit more openly so that we can all be a little bit more on the same page but also the clients i was working with were super small businesses they had no budget they had no budget for social media marketing because they didn't understand probably the value and the the um return on investment they could see um, but I have no, I have no problem with saying I, I undercharge myself or charge myself accurately at, at that time mm. in my career. You're gaining, you know, invaluable experience, and sometimes you can't really put a price on that. Amen. So <laughs> there we go. Yes, boom! I got that one in. <laughs> oh, I feel good for that. So you applied to that um, social manager job, and today you're a head of content. Yes. I mean, amazing, <laughs> fucking amazing, so good. How's how's that journey been between that first <laughs> that first job and really now yeah. having a massive team under you and and how's that and history just... degree going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's crazy to think back and think back at the journey of, the journey I've been on in the last couple of years. It the only way I can describe it is a whirlwind. Mm. And I Steve sat me down day one. There was three of us on four of us on the team, including his PA and. He sat me down and he said, the next three months are going to be the craziest, steepest learning curve probably of your life. He was like, have you been to uni? I was like, yeah. He's like, have you been to this? Yeah. He knew nothing about me because he trusted this team so much to hire the right people. And he said, put all that, that's all out the window. Like we're starting from scratch and this is going to be the steepest learning curve of your life. Couldn't be more right. Those first three months we were... I mean, I was literally, me and Steve were sat next to each other day in, day out, wherever we traveled to in the world, he was doing talks here, there and everywhere, even though it was kind of, no, we'll, we'll leave that to one side. <laughs> <laughs> we were traveling all over the world yeah. and and um, we were sat next to each other and every, from day one, he goes, we've just got to start posting content. And I was like, you've got 1.2 million followers on Instagram. Am I just going to start posting content? And he went, well, if you don't start posting today, then you're not going to start posting tomorrow. And then you're going to build up this fear. So you need to start posting. And as soon as you post, I'll give you feedback. And it was as live and it was as real as that. And it was crazy, crazy fast paced um, to the point where I definitely started to like sacrifice other things. I don't regret it in the slightest. Like, Such I, as? Well, the social climber, I didn't post on it for a year. That's my, my passion project, my baby, which only now I've started to establish my team, my position, take a step back from the nitty gritty day to day. Have I got the perspective to be able to do that? Um, that sacrificed probably my immediate relationships, my friends, not so much my family, because I was still living at home at the time and I'm seeing them all the time. They're probably getting the, the best and the worst of me. Um, but I was so determined and driven and excited by this opportunity and I did I, it's a period of my life where I have very little responsibility um you know I don't have people depending on me older or younger I didn't you know I was very lucky to still be living at home um and I just thought I've got to throw myself into this 100% and the people who love me and care about me will be around all the way through this Absolutely. and they they are and they do and they've been so unbelievable they all know who they are and I've started to kind of now three years on 
find the balance that works for me. And I hesitant to say like work-life balance because that's that's not my situation. I A lot of my life is work. So it's just my balance. Like that's what I find. And in terms of balance, I just look for things that um, bring me joy to all degree, but maybe we'll come on to that later. Back to what I was talking about. Um, the... I can't even remember where we were in the group, in the in the stage of conversation. Um, so you started traveling a lot. We were, and we, yeah, exactly. We were sitting super fast, super fast paced learning experience, and it got to about six months in. Um, and I did think at that point, I was like, "This feels a little unsustainable." I did think, "This, I'm going at 100, 100 miles an hour here. I'm loving it, but at some point, I'm going to crash and burn." So I kind of saw that coming, and I said to Steve, "I was like, look." it's all well and good that I'm loving working across about six different channels right now. And we're trying to grow them all at the speed of light. And we're also launching a book and the podcast and we're gonna go two episodes a week and all of this, but I can't do it all by myself. And he went, well, hire someone. I went, pardon? Can I do that? I was like, <laughs> excuse me. He was like, well, if we're growing, they'll pay for themselves. And I'd, I'd never crossed my mind that kind of within my first year in this job or even kind of at the age I was or so quickly I'd be building out a team I didn't expect that from the role mm. a social media manager tends to kind of uh, be a title that does lots of things but I never expected to be moving up I think I went into like a more senior social media manager role and then into head of content um through two progressions and that changed the game like for me for for quite a few reasons but my first hire I realized how much I love investing my time in people's development. So that was something I didn't know was a skill I loved and something I am hugely passionate about. And it also allowed me to gain that perspective, as I was saying, on other areas of my life and bringing other other bits back in. And yeah. But I don't resent that time. Like I love that it was such a special intimate time within our what we were as a startup. I would suggest we're kind of now into like scale up size in terms of both team headcount and um, the, income that's coming in and the profit and all of that sort of thing and um, we kind of consider ourselves like they're the two stages that we've been in and that startup time was so so fun like so exciting but yeah i never expected it must to have been massively yeah massively exciting to see the see the numbers coming in because i think it was the time at which i think we we've probably talked about it before that was kind of probably the time when we first started to pick up on it as a podcast well we were i remember <laughs> i remember so clearly we hit top 50 we hit top 50 in um apple and spotify and i remember a year into my role we hit 100k subs on youtube and when we for clarity we're just about to hit 2 million so yeah that's that's the speed that we hit are. top 20 in greece not long ago <laughs> uh, for, um, that's amazing. it's true yeah. it's, i think this, just just for a week just one week um business greece entrepreneurship is, greece, is niche. greece yeah greece, greece is niche. top we're 20 all about niche. so i don't know where, where are you in greece whereabouts oh are you, you know what you're probably well, on you're yeah. probably top, yeah. no i mean i'm just just saying yeah. 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 top of yeah. europe it's, it's okay, number yeah. one yeah but but I think, small, small wins you know small i think wins. it's important to say like i know it can seem so unattainable and so yeah. out of reach when i say and we get into the numbers and what we're doing and what we're doing now and that we're europe's number one podcast we've actually and you know, we're breaking America. We've just hit top 10 in overall US podcast, which was our huge goal for Incredible. this year. And, so, but you know. Sam. So, Igor. <laughs> Studio Ninja. Yeah, let's just talk, let's talk a little bit about our sponsor. And I was wondering about what we need to say in this little section, because I really want to talk about just how vital it is to my business. And yeah. one thing that came up recently was, in my own business, was that I was thinking about whether I need to get a VA on board. Mm -hmm. Like, do I need somebody that's going to help me just, you know, perform some of the admin tasks? And when I looked at it and I re it really boiled down to what do I need somebody on board for, I realized that I don't actually do much admin. Yeah. And I don't do much admin purely because of Studio Ninja. Yeah. Everything's automated. Yeah, my invoices, my diary, my questionnaires that I send out. Email templates. Cha email templates, chasing up invoices. Yeah, everything's fully automated to the point where it doesn't take a huge amount of my time anyway. So it kind of defeats the whole point of a VA. So for me, it is a very integral part of my business. Yeah. And... I think when you're running a business, you're self-employed like we are, mm -hmm. you know, being efficient, yeah. being productive, making sure that things run in the right order. If you find yourself doing any kind of repeat task, you have to say to yourself, why am I repeating this? Automate it. Um, and if you can automate it, then that's it. And that's really where Studio Ninja fits in with me and my business. And they have very kindly given us a discount code, haven't they, for this podcast? So yeah. what's that discount code, Igor? Another idea. And another idea gets you 50% off your first annual subscription yeah so 
it's just a no-brainer. I mean, I wouldn't even be hanging around. Just go and look at you, Ninja. Just go and do it right now. But thank you very much, guys, for sponsoring this podcast. We love you. We appreciate you. Keep it up. We love Studio Ninja. Two years ago, we were genuinely celebrating hugely if our podcast in day one had hit 10,000 10, views on YouTube. It wouldn't be over. And now if we don't hit 10,000 in the first half an hour, we're like, this one's not going very well. Yeah. But that that is the and I, I, the reason I want, I had, the reason I think it's so important I share kind of the beginning and where we're up to now is because all that's changed in that time, well, nothing's really changed in that time apart from us being like so rigorously consistent mm. and determined that we were going to win the game. And, you know, there are points in that curve, there's, we have a million curves and a million data points, but there are points in the curve where it doesn't look like it's going well. It doesn't look like it's, you know, it doesn't look like it's going to go to where it is today for sure. And, you know, so many people at that point could have gone, yeah, podcasting, done that. Do you know what I mean? On to the next thing. But we have just not, we've not missed a week. We then doubled up and now we're doing two episodes a week. We doubled the team, we expanded, we invested in all the resource. We've got the most incredible minds and people working across the podcast, across content, across social, across the whole content machine. And the real the real thing that has happened there is like compounding gains and compounding interest. Yeah. And it, yeah, I, I just, I love that that's an example of that because I think when I say, you know, we market to 10 million people or we're Europe's number one podcast, it can just feel so out of reach. Do you know what I mean? It feels like so far away from people that it's not inspiring anymore. It's like, if you ever, I talk a lot about mentoring and I think the best kind of mentors you can have are only a few stages above you, a few stages ahead of you, because actually if they're too far away, everything feels unattainable and you can't see the steps. Yeah. So yeah, I think, I just, I think back to those days when we were, I, when we hit 100k subscribers on YouTube, we had the biggest party. We all ordered the frames and I've still got it hung up on my wall to this day, <laughs> um, celebrating 100k. We thought we'd made it. Like that was the coolest thing ever. Where's it at now? And now, yeah, now we're just about to hit 2 mil this month, Incredible. which is crazy. And it's just, it's going faster and faster and faster and faster. But I mean, maybe we'll go into it, but the, the I say that like the curves, there were moments where like, you know, it could have gone lots of ways or whatever, but the care and the obsession and the attention to detail and every detail, like every single detail across the whole board of podcasting, the whole team is obsessed with. So I think that's really clear to see though. Yeah, but uh, there was never the outside, any like, there was we, never any doubt in our minds. Like yeah. we knew we knew we were gonna win. And I probably sound psychopath. Like, <laughs> like you can probably see it in my eyes, like, yeah. I knew we were yeah. gonna win. I'm like, fight. I'm this is Stephen Bartlett coming yeah. through. Like this yeah. is the... <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, but it is, it, you know, it has. I'm sure people do tell you this, but like I just think of me and Igor having conversations a year and a half ago, and we we probably talked about something like this two, two or three years ago, but never really had the the vehicle or the the space in which to create content. And you know, when we discovered that podcast and we both started having a conversation around it, it was massively inspiring. And I don't think we'd be here if it wasn't for us listening to that podcast. Yeah. Um, and and I'm and I'm 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 sure I'm sure that you know that you you and your team do recognise that it's inspired a lot of other people to to go and just give give podcasting give podcasting a go. Um, but for us, it wasn't just about giving it a go. It was about okay, how do we make it the best the best fucking podcast we can make it? You know, how do we make the production value as good as it can possibly be? How do we? you know, keep showing up? How do we keep it consistent? Yeah. Um, I can't and it, tell- and it's inspired I, yeah. us on so many levels, more than just the level of, we're going to start a podcast. I can't tell you how, like I will genuinely clip that and send that to the team because that is our why. Like that is why we do it every day. It's for people to start podcasts. It's for people who start businesses. It's for people who quit their jobs for never, you know, never thinking they could leave their job. It's for the people who leave relationships. It's, it's for all those things and it's hearing that has had real life impact on real human beings is the best feeling in the world. We have a whole chat in our kind of comms channels dedicated to called impact. And anytime we see anything, and I mean anything, it's a comment on YouTube, it's a DM, um, it's a letter written in, it all goes in there and we all read everything because that's our why. Like our why isn't to create the best podcast in the world. Like that's almost like a byproduct, but cause you would, you, you lose steam if you don't have that like intrinsic motivation, yeah. like they're the people who that would have quit. Do you know what I mean? Because you don't, you don't get to 10 million or whatever overnight. Like this doesn't exist. So, oh, And that, that also doesn't just happen by sheer luck or fluke. No, exactly. You, that comes through a multitude of factors. And yeah. one of them is like a, an absolute passion, but 
combined with a ridiculous work ethic. Yeah, and the the impact blows my mind. If, if you we and we try and visualize it, you know, we try and not treat the results or KPIs in just terms of numbers. We we see the impact as one of our KPIs. Like we see like key performing indicators. Sorry for speaking out no, of time. No, no, no. Um, and we that it's a, that's what gets you out of bed. Do you know what I mean? That's what gets you out of bed yeah. in the morning. That's the thing that brings the team together. That's the thing that keeps you going through the early nights or the early nights. God, no early nights. The early mornings or the late nights. Um, or like traveling around, you know, doing all these things or maybe missing an event with your family or, you know, all those things. But it makes it so worth it. And we've done some, we do loads of live events, but we did Dare Over Year Live, which was an amalgamation of the podcast and gospel choirs and it was just it was just wonderful and we sold out the palladium three times and we which we never we never expected that community as a result of the podcast because it didn't really exist back then and we had like rogan and people like that but seeing the real life community there telling you their stories about how the way the podcast has impacted you will fuel me forever genuinely it's it's the best video in the world it's incredible. And you'll take that and you as a team, I guess, as well, we'll take that away. And just how can we make it better for those people that we've just met? We looked into their, into the white of their eyes and saw the excitement and how you were able to literally <laughs> raise their confidence and whatever else within their businesses. So no, that's incredible. And from what you said there, in terms of the team itself, how, how's, how's that journey been for you in terms of just building a team really? And just hiring and <laughs> perhaps God. say no yeah, and yeah. how's that been for you a journey that i'm very much still on um i remember when i when i first kind of hired my first person it was only a couple of months in when i went something like it was work clicked in my mind twigged in my mind and i thought god i'm like responsible for this person's yeah development like that's terrifying um and i didn't have any of those skills but super supported by kind of the higher the team and steve and i've done loads of development things now and loads of courses and invested in loads of you know my time in reading books because i'm so it's something that's become almost as high on the passion passion list as as social media as marketing as like doing the podcast i'm a, obsessed with like my team's development and nothing nothing makes me prouder than seeing them shine like that's the best feeling in the entire world um I mean even yesterday I put up a story of my team like presenting some ideas in a in a meeting and I was just sat there thinking you wouldn't have done that like you wouldn't have done that a year ago and I sent her a message saying like I'm, I'm really proud of what you've achieved there because and then and it allows me to go back and think wow what role have I maybe played in that journey as well like how cool is that so for me it is something that I invest a lot of time in so I'm you know read all sorts of books and listen to podcasts and leadership and development and I think it's an ongoing journey I'm you know there's no finish point it's just how can I keep getting better and keep serving my team better um and it's something that I never really as I said expected from the role so that's that's real cool really cool it's been a really great bonus it's one of the ways that the role has really evolved um hiring's interesting really interesting get it right get it wrong yeah um we haven't we were actually literally talking today in our kind of leadership chat about ways we can evolve um our hiring process we've tried kind of slightly more corporate methods didn't work for us at all we've kind of stripped it back to our three bullet points again because that works that works for us but we're such a team where we you know we're office first which is quite rare in this hybrid culture days um we do our best work in person and the people there's not that many people who are willing to do that anyway so it it cuts it down quite quickly <laughs> um i mean there are we get pl we get plenty of people applying but it's it's interesting and i think we're we do a lot of we do all our interviewing in person as much as we possibly can because that's how we get the best kind of sense of people but we're very much a you can teach the skills to people but you can't teach people to be kind and we care a lot about people being kind in our team because we spend a lot of time yeah. together i was just going to ask you what what have, what have been the mistakes <clears throat> from a recruitment point of view what have you what have you what found to be? Learned. Yeah, what have, what's have been the lessons like when you you take somebody on and you've gone, oh, this isn't a right fit. What? Why is it not a right fit, or why is it not I worked think out? Personally, an experience like an experience I personally had rather than team wide because I I can't really speak on those as much. But um, someone it was an expectation management. So our our hours aren't nine to five. Um, uh, the jobs evolve very quickly. I think everyone I've hired into my team started doing one thing and doing something completely different now, led by their desires and their passion about what they want to do. Mm -hmm. But also in the early days, we kind of need to get you doing a little bit of everything to figure it out. Um, 
and that deep desire to learn. You know, if I go back to how I saw it as a learning opportunity. Very clear, like from just how you've talked for the last five, 10 minutes about like, we talk about all the time about growth mindset and just having that switch that goes, oh, I don't don't know everything. Yeah. I I really don't. Yeah. And I think this is what's really intrinsic about podcasts and listening to podcasts is that it's just like a constant sort of pool of knowledge that we say every time we put an episode out, if someone just listens to this and takes one thing away from it... And actually implements it. And actually it. implements it into their business, it's it's invaluable. I always say that when I... Um, people often ask about if I do a talk or something and they'll say, how do you get the confidence to do the talking? Um, and I say, I just think if one person leaves this talk today or leaves this event um, and I get one message or one person come up to me and say, that X, Y, Z really stuck with me, worth it. Yeah, like if totally. one person can leave with one lesson, that's like my job done. So yeah, I completely agree with that. Amazing. Um, moving into the so, sort of like social media side of it, any sort of like social media platform at the moment that you find the favorites? Ooh, now you're going to get me talking and you won't be able to shut me up. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, favorites, interesting. Don't need to fasten my seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> get ready, Sam. They, oh, so many things serve so many different purposes. I'll talk about two things. One that um, it, we're not using yet, but we're talking and thinking a lot about is this new app called Lemonade, which Lemonade. is by yeah. ByteDance, which who were created and founded TikTok. They're the powerhouse behind TikTok. And all I'm thinking is like, I've I've got the app, I'm using it. I'm trying to figure it all out. It's very basic in its current form. It doesn't seem to serve the purpose I'm like looking for. It doesn't fill the, any gaps that I'm, I've got at the moment. But I just think I thought that about TikTok when it first came out mm. and look at TikTok now and ByteDance have the power, the capacity and the budget and the spend and the team behind it to make whatever they want to do great. So I think it's worth just getting in early and figuring it out. We actually had a call with their team and their partnership manage- their partnership team this morning and their vision is actually completely different to what it is now. So we know it's gonna, I mean, anyone knows that a, a new app it, by ByteDance is gonna evolve. It evolves so fast as well. Yeah. It changes so quickly. It's crazy. And you know, they've they've said it actually, they want it to be like a product search engine. So they want it to be your go-to place to look for products, which makes a lot of sense because a lot of people use TikTok as basically their search engine these days. So you understand where they're coming from. Obviously they want to compete with Instagram. They want to com- compete with image first um, apps. So I think that's really interesting. It's obviously not my favorite because I'm not practicing and not using it. Um, my favorite, is, my favorite will always come back to being Instagram. And I know it can be controversial because people feel like they're, you know, Adam, the head of head of Instagram, is constantly like switching things up and changing things so fast that people can't keep up. The algorithm hates <laughs> me. <laughs> oh, don't get me started. <laughs> but what I will say is that they also listen. Like they really, really listen. Like if we look back to the absolute mayhem that was caused when all the Kardashians were coming out and saying, I want Instagram to go back to being my my friend's pictures on my feed, get rid of all these reels, it doesn't need to be TikTok. Um, and they have, they've reversed the changes that were made because they listened to the people and the people on the platform. I'm sure there's- Which takes a lot sometimes in big organizations. To put your hands up and yeah. go, we got that wrong. Yeah. And publicly say, and I really respect that. Like I think, yes, maybe it might be coming from different yeah. angles. From what I can see, they have listened, understood, heard, and said, yeah, we got that wrong. We're gonna switch it and make it a bit more a bit more fair. I also really, really like the, they're bringing a lot of new features that suggest they are really listening to people. One being, um, they've just put this new feature up on, on your profiles, which will, if you click through it, will tell you when the profile was made publicly and when the last name, your last time your username was changed. And what that does is allows um, scam accounts spam accounts people to go on and say they changed their username yesterday like these guys aren't aren't legit aren't we? um and we're as a company both driver ceo and stephen bartlett constantly constantly getting messages from people going oh i've just had a message from stephen bartlett telling me to invest in xyz is it really him and we re- i really really hope updates like this and the transparency will really really allow people to to stay away from that because that's that's the dark side of social media that's yeah. where it can get dangerous alongside the other other sections, but um, that's where it can actually become a little bit dangerous and a little bit not fun to be around. And obviously we're around someone who um, has quite a big public profile and we don't want to be involved in any of that sort of thing for any reason, because we don't want to, you know, that could have real, real effects on people's lives. So I really think that as an app, it's evolved and it's grown and it's the only app that I started using when social media came out really, that I'm still using today. I'm not, a user of snap anymore apart from using it for 
um, the Diary of a CEO where we're starting to put the show on there because huge, interesting, really young audience we want to experiment with. You know, I'm not using Twitter in the same way. We don't even need to get started on that. <laughs> um, LinkedIn is a, a interesting relationship. Um, I, I have a question for you about LinkedIn yeah. in some ways. <laughs> Why are you so inconsistent? <laughs> no, no, I was actually going to say that Oh, we um, can't ask that question. <laughs> this is Mr. Inconsistency sat right in front of you. So it's don't true. don't you worry about that. I was going to say that um, in terms of LinkedIn, out of all the guests that we've had, you seem to ha be someone that is actually really intentional the way you use LinkedIn. And yeah, it's just great to see it done and see it being done well in a, in a good way. So well, that's such yeah. a relief. I, have, I do have a real love hate relationship with it and the only reason for that isn't the platform itself it's actually because of the type of influencer that it's created and i think i'm in a bit of a what's it created a pardon what's it created what type of influencer Monsters. okay Monsters. no i'm joking um it's created how do i say this nicely it's it's created a generation of personal brand managers who are essentially ghostwriters, what we would have called ghostwriters or copywriters, yep. who believe that they are established marketers and are in turn trying to build their own personal branding platform without actually having any experience or anything qualified to say. And it's just a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise on the platform um, and because of how the algorithm works, you don't get a feed of who you follow. So it's much harder to curate. So on Instagram, you can mute people, you can yeah. um, unfollow. Whereas LinkedIn, I could unfollow them all, but I'm probably still gonna see them because of how the algorithm works. And I'm gonna see people in different circles. And I have a real, I, I think we're just gonna, I think we're basically in this big wave of this type of creator that's, it's really unsustainable. It's not gonna last very long because you can only kind of, create a facade online for so long until people actually see that you don't have much I to suspect, offer. Um, I suspect the world of, of, of AI is kind of massively contribute to that because exactly. people can almost go and just- Be an expert you know, in whatever they want. Be an expert. Yeah. They can just type a couple of things into the generic chat places and come up with a copy that sort of sounds semi-legit. And I and think- like you know yeah, what you're talking about. I but. fear that spread of, I really fear that kind of spread of misinformation on like many a scale. Yeah. But I think the world that I'm in and seeing these personal brand managers emerge kind of overnight um, and trying to talk about things and with authority does kind of concern me slightly, but I've also seen a lot of them come and go already. Um, and that's kind of the noise that I, cause I also got, start, I feel like I started getting caught up in it cause they all post in a very similar way with very similar imagery about very similar topics to the point where, God, I hope I don't get counsel for this, <laughs> that where, um, if, they, if you kind of covered up their profile picture or, or their, their name, you probably wouldn't be able to differentiate between who mm. it is. Yeah. And I really got caught up in how they were posting and thinking that that was how you've got to post. And I had to really pull myself apart and go, I don't actually care what I'm writing about at this point, which is really, really not something that's a bit of me. So I kind of, I stay away. And I literally, when I think about something I want to post, I think is valuable and I think will add to people, I'll just chuck it up there. And that's that's my regime with LinkedIn for now until until like because when i'm when i'm in it too much i don't like i don't like what i'm talking about so yeah. i stay away and i put what i need to post on there i think there's some really when you can just get through the noise and get through all the trees like there are some really cool creative people on that platform who are sharing really interesting stuff in like long detailed form where you can really read and get into it um but you have to wade through a lot of noise right now yeah. so it's not my favorite <laughs> you're good at it though you are very good <laughs> at it it's very kind um, you seem to be a lot about experimentation um, with social media in, in general and even through the conversation that we had, it's really evident, but why is it so important for you? It's the only way you can grow. Experimentation is the secret source, the magical thing that's going to take you from zero to a hundred or zero to a thousand. For me, we've spoken about consistency. So consistency for me isn't about posting every single day. Consistent consistency for me on social media is consistently experimenting and consistently looking every single day at how you can pull a lever, change a little something here, add a little something here to see if you can break through all the noise. So experimentation for me and our team is key. It's our value. Like it's our, if you probably pulled 
any one of 30 of the members of Dara CEO or Stephen Bartlett's team up here and you said, tell me about, you know, your three core values. They tell you experimentation, they tell you marginal gains and they tell you just be a nice person. Like I genuinely think you could get anyone from our team up here and they'd probably tell you those three things. I remember Steve did a talk recently and I was just getting some content in the corner and he said, someone asked a question like, how do you inspire your team? And then he goes, well, I know that if I pulled Grace up here right now, she would tell you that we care so deeply about being nice people, values, one thing, experimentation and marginal gains. And it's true. Like they're the things I think about and are like embedded into my core <laughs> every day. And we're just like, you can be fine at something or you can be great. And the only way you can be great is if you're just trying new things and you're getting there and you're mm. failing faster than everyone else. Like that's our culture, like fail faster than everyone else because you make a hundred mistakes, there's gonna be one thing in there that works well and it's gonna send you on a new trajectory and it's gonna move the needle a little bit. And that's all we're thinking about. Like every day, it's not about getting to 10 million YouTube subscribers. Like that will be the result of us every single day zooming in and looking at how we can just alter the trajectory, just alter the line like by one degree every day. Like, I mean, you've seen all those diagrams before. It's yeah. it's it's just incredible what you can do if you just really, really think about getting, diving deep in and just seeing how you can twist and turn and twist and turn. And a fail safe environment. Like we're so lucky to work in an environment where it's encouraged. We're literally encouraged to fail. We'd rather see a list of 10 things you failed in this week than one great thing you do in a month like for sure it's really refreshing to hear isn't it mm -hmm. like just really like i think we all deep down know that that's right but i think society or culture almost encourages us all to just put out the perfect post it's got to be perfect you know we see it in our industry time and time again people kind of procrastinating over oh, i'm going to do this real now i'm going to set up cameras i'm mm -hmm. going to make it lit, properly lit and that's so you've got your phone just use your phone you know it's it's they're always everybody's always looking to try and really polish it beyond it just to the point where it's just the your moments the moment's gone exactly and people care about a lot more about what you're trying to say and your message and your values than Absolutely. how it all looks anyway i would just say if anyone you know everyone's thinking about getting started or how they get started is just put something out there learn something from it. your goal your entire goal should be to learn one lesson from it take that lesson and apply it to the next thing i we were saying before this like my my social climate platform linkedin on instagram is my content playground that is where i try everything out i tried a new thing yesterday did okay gonna try it and mix it up next week see how it goes and just detaching yourself from thinking that the numbers own you and that they define your value and all of that just for anybody thing. that's listening though, what what kind of things are you what kind of experimentation do you go through what 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 so like for example like yesterday what was your what did you try yeah for sure how, how so um i'm really interested at the moment in how we can, so as someone who heads up a team of uh, content creators, we are strategizing and scheduling and doing things all the time, which is great. But then how do you allow for that room to be kind of off the cuff and a little bit less polished and a little bit in a, a setup that's just raw and authentic. And spontaneous and Spontaneous. Yeah. But how, as someone who kind of has to manage a schedule and a strategy and you're working with someone like Steve, who's super busy, how do you incorporate that like special raw magic into a strategy? Something I'm thinking about all the time. So what I've, I've been discussing it. So in the diary of CEO, that, in the diary of CEO team and Steven's Instagram, that's something we've been discussing a lot about. And our answer to it all has been, let's get, and you might've seen, he posted a job post today for a videographer to, for, for vlogging, we're gonna get him mic'd up and film him 24 seven. We're gonna film him from the minute he wakes up to the minute he goes to sleep because that's the only way we're gonna get those raw authentic- um... Fancy, fancy about that. <laughs> in the shower. <laughs> um, but in the gym, so we want, you know, I said, how can we get your thoughts in the gym, for example, because yeah. he goes to the gym every single day. We know it's part of its part of his routine. How can we capture that content? Um, and it's not a case of me like trying to find time in the dark. He goes to the gym when he wants to go to the gym. So the only answer to this is to have a videographer and have him mic'd up 24 seven. And that's what we're gonna try. We're gonna see if it works. We're gonna see if we establish something and then we're gonna go from there. But on the like finer details, we're, we're experimenting with every single thumbnail that goes out on YouTube. We have 20 thumbnails we're testing for two weeks through Facebook paid ads before that to try and find which thumbnail creates more click through. And we only spent like 20 pounds, 30 pounds. Which is amazing it. really, given that the size of, of Diary of CEO now, you would think that your 
Oh, we've got brand this. is beyond is, is be like you don't need to do that. Yeah. But the fact that you are doing it just goes to show the value and importance of it. But a thumbnail, you know, exactly. And a thumbnail was something most people wouldn't think too much about. It's something mm. they probably put a tight up. We from the moment it goes live at six AM to six PM that day, it's probably been through about ten iterations. And we're looking every single time in that hour, does it change the trajectory? Does it change the trajectory? Someone is watching and monitoring and watching and monitoring and we're switching things out and we're putting things in and we're trying to give every single episode its best its best opportunity yeah. and its best chance of being seen, whether that's changing the title. Or we test the titles for, you know, we create 20 titles the week before and we're testing them as well. Every single little detail. Like I, I could go into it all. We've just this week switched up how we want to try doing different um, copy in the promo trailers for Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn. We're now putting all of the topics instead of doing long form um, narrative. So we're just completely switching things up there. And we just want to see if that encourages more click through or if we get to see more in the back end of people coming through from social media platforms, because, you know, we know we have this audience of millions and millions on these platforms. So how can we engage one more percent over the next month? That's what Marginal we're thinking gains. about. Marginal gains. I mean, we changed up the the call to action that is in the episode to encourage people to subscribe 10 times and every single time we look at how it impacts the subscriber rate and what we can say from that one and that one that pulls together to make the ultimate call to action to encourage people to, to subscribe because the more subscribers, the more reach, the more monetization opportunities. So everything, we are looking at everything. And it's, I think I'm, and I hundred percent I'm like that because Steve's like that without a doubt. Steve yeah, sees yeah. everything. He's, on a business call, on a board meeting over there. And he's texting me about this LinkedIn post that went up 30 seconds ago. And there's one word that he wants to change and he sees everything. So I think that's hundred percent where I get it from. It's like detail oriented, yeah. detail orientated, thinking about experimentation constantly, thinking about what can we do to mix this up? You know, his dream world is we come to him every day and we go, we want to try this today. And he goes, cool, where are we going? What are we doing? That's the, that's the dream situation because it can't get, I just think it can't get, I mean, with a public figure, it can go a little bit wrong, but it can't. what can go so wrong? Do you know what yeah. I mean? What can go mm. so wrong? But what can go so right? We've got some work to do, haven't we, guys? <laughs> <laughs> it's just inspirational to hear. Yeah, massively. And, oh. and I guess as well, putting yourselves in the sort of like, in the audience's shoes, um, any sort of advice that you'd be able to give to anyone that is literally starting their account from zero and they might look at Steven, look at us, look at you, what you're doing for social climber and sort of thinking, I'll never be able to do that. So any sort of like tips or even mindsets that you can give in order for people to kind of like go and jump and level up as much as they can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think kind of what we were discussing before, if you are starting an account from scratch, you need to the first thing you need to be doing is do a little bit of research. So look at what other accounts are doing and your kind of similar industry, but don't look at them as competitors, look at them as your your allies because you're gonna support each other and you're gonna help grow each other during this process. So look at what other people are doing, look at trends, read, kind of keep updated, stay on top of the trends and the updates because they come in thick and fast. So making sure you're one step ahead is gonna allow you to not fall behind or feel dragged down every single time the wave comes in. Um, so make sure you're kind of up to date and in tune with things that are going on. And then you need to find your why, because a lot of people get very confused here. They post about their what. So your what is this podcast, that's your thing. But your why is because you wanna connect with creators and entrepreneurs and bridge that gap in the creativity world. So that's the stuff you need to be talking about online because that's the thing people connect to. People buy into your why, they don't buy into your what. So if you're a, I mean, if you're an energy drink brand, you're, and the reason I bring this, give this example is because you've just started working with one, um, one of the Dragon's Den um, investments. And the, the what is the energy drink, but you post that all over social media no one cares. It looks like, a, it looks like an ad. I don't can, care less. I need to connect with your why. And their why is they want to like energize, energize the nation. And suddenly you go, we want to energize the nation. Cool, we'll do a content series on um, X, Y, Z, or we'll do this on this. You're not going to mention the product because you just happen to sell the product. But people buy into the why and people buy from people. So they need to connect your values and their mission, your mission. And people get into this content rut. I've actually got a post on this coming this week. Um, <laughs> something I've been thinking about a lot because people think they're doing a great job and then you go onto their feed and it's just full of their product and then they're wondering why they're not converting. 
you need to connect people and build that community from the grassroots up, from the ground up, so that when you have this product that goes on sale, when they walk into the uh, Tesco and it's in the meal deal section, they choose your brand over the other one because they feel so aligned and connected to your values and they feel like they're part of a community and there's a sense of belonging there and there's a sense of loyalty and brand loyalty. So I think that's what I would suggest. I think people get so caught up in the what because obviously they want to sell and it's really important that they create something that monetizes, but that is a byproduct and you're stunting your growth if you're just showing them the what. You need to tell them the why. Um, and I could talk about that for days. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all I think we're all um we're all aware of those companies or brands or individuals or small companies, whatever it might be, that only turn up when they've got something to sell. And we all see through it and you just scroll on by or you you know, you unfollow. Exactly. Um it's that Gary V saying, isn't it, of Jab, 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 jab. I was going to go hook, 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 hook. I was like, no. no, if I've said it, I've got to get jab, it right. Jab, 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 jab. But you know, it is, it is, it is that, isn't it? And you know, um, 100%. It, you've got to engage with well, your people, audience. And, and people aren't showing up on social media to be sold to. That's not, I don't know why you guys use it, but for a lot of people, it's like, it's a break from their day to day. It's a bit of light relief or it's a bit of, it's a way to be informed. They're not turning up to sit there and be like, take my money. Like, yeah. I don't know many people who are doing that, but people will give you their money because they want to invest into you and your business and your brand as a result of connecting with you. So I think a lot of people neglect that that early stage where you really need to warm people up and you really need to, to get them on your side. And you do that by telling stories, talking about things that are important to you, sharing your mission, sharing your values, and you'll be amazed. It'll be like magnets drawing people in. You drop the launch, you drop the sale, we drop a live date, we drop a, we drop a talk, instant sell out. It's not, you know, there's there's marketing involved, of course. There's a there's a conversion funnel and all that, but 90% of our sales are down to an engaged community, without a doubt. Yeah, and it's amazing how, um, you know, even I suppose you're kind of, we were talking about like even just small one-man businesses, aren't we? One, one man and one woman of brands. You know, just the power of just showing your face as well a little bit and just turning up and, you know, it's like the what is your product or your service, but if you can just tie that into a little bit about what you are as a person, as an, as an individual, you're giving people that reason to be able to connect with you, aren't you? And I think mm. that's really what you mm. you were kind of getting at, is that, is that real kind of, that hook, like people are drawn to people at the end of the day, not exactly. just- People buy from people. Yeah. And it's the human, It's and it, yeah, 100% show your face if, you're, if you've got the ability and the confidence to show your face. But if you can't show the thing, you don't, you, know, you physically don't have to show your face to show the human behind the scenes. Yeah. So whether it's showing what you're doing in your day or finding points of relatability that are the, are the connection points to your audience, whether it's your, you know, your dog or your food shop or a hobby that you're doing, talk about it because people will then start to remember you by those things. They're not going to remember you by your product. That's it. We've been talking a lot about the world online and how we live in it and obsess over it sometimes, but... Um, I saw that recently you you went off grid for three days, which is incredible. But what sort of like led that, and what what was the result from it? For sure, isn't it funny that we think nowadays like going off grid for three days is yeah. crazy? Like, are you from Mars? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, there's this there's this gorgeous company called Unplugged, and they offer these cabins. It's quite a new company. We've worked with them quite a bit, and they have these cabins in the woods that are totally off grid in terms of electricity and all of that sort of thing. But in terms of you literally get your phone, you put it in a box, you lock it up. And I've tried, I've explained the concept to a few people and they go, well, can't you just do that at home? But it's the whole concept of you go to this so place in this, you're and, isolated. Yeah. It's, it's, you're dedicating your time to go in this space for that reason. Um, and to be honest, the reason I did, they reached out to me and um, we've been having conversations for a long time. We're doing a bit with products and stuff with them. And they said, look, go and experience it. And I, I was I was like, okay, sure, no worries. And I've, you know, lucky enough to have a team um, who allow that to happen. They function amazingly when I'm there and when I'm not there. And I saw it as an opportunity to just, I haven't, I haven't done that since I probably got a phone since I was 13. So for the last, God, God did maths word, the last <laughs> few years, I um, <laughs> haven't probably done three solid days with no contact to the outside world, apart from I was with my boyfriend, had to have real you know, conversation, which was a whole nother thing. Um, no, it was fine. And um, so yeah, it was really interesting. And I- Did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it and I didn't miss my phone that much. 
And to the point where we kind of left on the last day and we thought well, we won't check our phones till we get home because this has been so lovely and you're in this little bubble. It's not, you know, attainable every day in the work that I do, but it did allow me to have that extreme version mm. of the other side and go, okay, how can yeah. I implement a little bit more of this? You know, I read books. I read multiple books in three days, which I don't do unless I'm, you know, on a sun lounge or on holiday. Um, so I just thought, okay, I'm gonna incorporate like reading a chapter in my book, writing in my journal a bit more, just doing things that make me feel good without needing to rely on this because yeah. I think it, it has definitely become a reliance, especially when you work in it. Um, so yeah, I just do a few little, took a few little practices from it, but I'd recommend it to anyone. It was gorgeous and I'm definitely gonna do it again. Amazing. Yeah, I've seen them. Um, I've seen Unplugged. I've seen some other little cabins and been like, yeah, it's a lovely concept. A great, a great thing to do. Yeah, it, I yeah, genuinely I'd recommend it to anyone. And of course you can implement it at home. Like you can have no, I've, what I have done since is I've had a few no phone Saturdays um, where I will just leave my phone at home and go out and it's like a less extreme version. But it's, I think it is important to, you just notice, you notice all the little things and the small things that make it all worth, worth doing and worth living, which we all know is what we need. Yeah. But it, putting it into practice is a whole other thing. So I think actually being as extreme as that and saying, I'm not going to take my phone out today and I'm just going to see what happens. You know, if, I, and I think, oh God, how am I going to pay for things? I've got to take physical cards out. You have to think about those things, but that's okay. Or take some <laughs> cash out. Yeah. Um, and it's just fun. Like it's just, it's just a bit different. And I mean, it's just us going back to our basic human needs isn't it which yeah. is at our core and what we probably should be paying more attention yeah, to 100 yeah. percent. did you find it a, in the sense of sort of like work-life balance that the needle shifted or did they even have to shift yeah so i don't massively believe in or support this idea of work-life balance i don't think it's a 50 50 game i don't think it's one or the other for me i think it evolves as you go through life. So right now I have no dependencies, I have no responsibilities, very little responsibilities um, in terms of um, looking after humans or um, financial responsibilities. You know, I pay my rent and pay my bills and that's about it. Um, and I don't see it as one or the other. So I, I hate this idea that it's work hyphen life balance. That's it. So I see it as life. And I'm just trying to get the best kind of balance I can achieve. I love my job. I'm in a hugely privileged I'm in a hugely privileged position where I wake up and I love what I'm going to do. So why would I try and dilute that to bring up other elements when in actual fact, I just want to bring up all the things that make me happy and make me you know, full of joy and that make are intrinsically important to me. So I love spending time with my friends. I love my job. I love the social climber. I love doing things like this. So I'm making sure that I'm doing all of those and just watching the balance lift them up exactly and yeah. bring them up and forgetting all the things that i don't enjoy and that's you know many other things as well but that's okay and i don't i i really fought with this for a while because you hear this narrative all the time have it you found true. your work-life balance true, have you found it? your work-life balance and people would say it to me and i was oh god i, I need to stop working so much i need to stop work my mum's telling me i'm working too much but I love what I do and what like what a cool thing That's to exactly say. It. Isn't yeah. that isn't it's that really, so cool? It's really fortunate. It's not I was gonna say it's fortunate, but you've you've gone after that as it well. Isn't, it isn't it isn't it? Like I'm yeah. I I've have a huge amount of privilege behind me, but also I've made things happen. It's a it's a fine balance of the two. And how cool like maybe I won't in twenty years, thirty years be yeah. in this lovely opportunity and lovely lovely experience. So why wouldn't I There will be people that do are it? probably doing twenty hours a week less than you but are dead end miserable in their, in their job. And they want to finish at five and that's fine. And yeah. I totally get that. But people in my ear, I really struggled with it last year when people were saying, you haven't got your work-life balance together. If you can't prioritize seeing X, Y, Z. And I said, no, I am prioritizing. I'm prioritizing things that I really enjoy. And that yeah. right now I'm working on this really cool project that's going to take us to LA to film for Diary of CEO for three weeks, which is an opportunity that I've never Amazing. had before. So you best believe that I'm putting all my energy and all my hours into that. And if that means sacrificing a dinner here and a dinner there, like I'm, I'm sorry, I'm genuinely sorry. And I'll make it up to you at some point, but that's the stage of life I'm in now. And yeah. I'm, being quite actively selfish and yeah. finding the things that I enjoy what, and running with it. Yeah, what, a, what a contrast from that, you know, doing a, doing a degree in something because you just enjoyed the teacher and then doing- Because I was not, told to. Not doing, <laughs> not, almost not doing a degree because you thought you were too old at 23. Yeah. You know, it's- Well, it's because it, it's all the things the society and the social narrative tells you that you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I really struggled with last year, like juggling these two balls called work and life and work and life. And life was seemingly going down the drain. But in actual fact, I was living a really fulfilled life, but people were telling me that I weren't. And I was like, 
I can't I decide my own narrative and can't yeah, I decide what absolutely. I want to do? I don't, I don't think I know anybody that claims to have it all figured out. No. Do you? <laughs> no. I yes. think it's someone emailed <laughs> and me. If they, yes. And if they are, they're, they're probably like, a bit narcissistic. <laughs> someone, um, someone emailed me recently and was like, I just need to know your secrets. You seem like you've got it all together. And I literally screenshot it and sent it to my two group chats and they just burst out laughing because <laughs> if you know anything about me, you know that I have not got it all together. Like if it wasn't for my my lovely boyfriend who doesn't get enough praise my f i'd be living under 10 piles of clothes with no washing done and the dishwasher would be overfilled like i don't think about all of those things because we we work as a team and we do those together but god i do not have my life together like please <laughs> if you take anything from this we're all figuring it out and like i'm so far and if anyone does like tell me the secrets but we don't it's all just like a messy thing that we're just working through and just find the things that you enjoy and and run with them Come on, breath of fresh air. Absolutely. It really is. <laughs> so you've been um, working with Stephen and Dario CEO for two years now, over 130 episodes, and the amazing content that you guys are pouring out is incredible. Um, have you had any favorite guests or any favorite moment within it? Yes, and you can check a LinkedIn post that's pinned on my profile. Um, <laughs> I, Good way of bringing people <laughs> yeah. in. <laughs> you can tell I've done this before. <laughs> um, I, uh, my, my also we, when I, when I started out, we all sat down and we said, who are our, t we call them big hitters. Who are our number one guests? That if they came on the podcast, it would be a huge experience and tick in the box. And we all had a few, and we kind of put them down and we put them on this document and we refer back to them because. At the time, we were putting people who we've now kind of had on the podcast, which is amazing. And so we need to go going a bit bigger. So now people are like Obama or um, <laughs> <laughs> which our guest booking team are delighted Only by. Only the president. Yeah. Is, this, is, this, is this the cue to just get our board out that we started a year ago? <laughs> Merle, do you want to just get the board? Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming you've got a very similar concept to this in uh, Diary of the CEO. When we sat down. So when we sat down, just watch out. Yeah, we should be all right. Yeah, you can bring it in here. Look, bring it in here. Just, there we go. Thanks. Thanks, Merla. Thanks, Merla. There we go. So, so here we go. This We did this in April last year, I But reckon. you haven't had me on because you want to get Steve on, no, right? No, <laughs> definitely not. But we did. We um, Yeah, we started this in, this was a bit like March, April last year, wasn't it? And, and they, Stephen was a dream guest, along with um, Holly Tucker, Paul Smith, and Peter McKinnon. Love that. Yeah, yeah. Just, just um, aim for that. Exactly. And as soon as and you've managed, like you've putting it down pen to paper, it's, yeah, it's there. And you can we've, and you've crossed some people had, we've off. Crossed, we've had some of them on, yeah. And um, we've got more that we want to target. I presume and my probably name's read. probably on page two, yeah. so that's fine. We'll come yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But do you know what's what's actually happened is we've had people on here that and people that we didn't expect to come on it that have then yeah, you know, like you for example that. You've, you're on here because we, I don't Isabel. even know how Isabel came on it. I think Isabel just reached out to us and said, could I come on it? And we were like, yeah, great, come on. And then she came on and she was like, oh, you're going to need to go and speak to Grace. And, you know, it's amazing how we've had people on. And actually, one thing that we've talked about in this podcast before that's fascinated us actually is that when we did this list, we, we based it off thinking that we needed people that had got really big reach. Mm. And actually what we found is very quickly within the first four or five episodes is that people that have maybe only got 2000 followers have actually got a story to share and they can bring value and they can bring a lesson to 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 our audience and that was a big shift for us it actually yeah. made us kind of almost forget the list a little bit because then we started to look outside of what we thought we needed to provide and you've learned by like you've learned by doing right so you've you yeah. thought this was what you wanted to do you've seen it you've experimented and it's changed the trajectory and i think that's yeah. so important because i think people often will do what you've done. They'll have those people and then they'll come straight back to that list and yeah, try and fulfill it. them. Right, who's yeah. next? But like, let your audience dictate the direction that you go exactly. in. Yeah. Like, who are you doing it for? It's not for us. It's yeah. not for you. Like, you guys gain something, which is great. Um, like, all the value and the people and the connections, but you're doing it for the audience at the end of the day. So let them dictate the direction you want it to go in 100%. That's why we always, always ask our audience... Um, who they want to see next. Coming back to your question, my favorite guest ever, my big hitter. Who was on your, we, we were going on your yeah, list though, weren't we? Yeah, 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 go on then. Yeah, yeah. Um, Whitney Wolf Hurd, who is yes. the founder of Bumble. Bumble. But alongside from that, her story is iconic. It's incredible. It's so inspiring. And she was the person thinking back to when I started my journalism course, who I listened to her on an episode of a podcast. And I thought this podcasting thing's quite cool, but also, her story has moved me. The, the, she was the first podcast I listened to on um, how I built this, I think. Yeah, this one, I know. Maybe not, just scrub that. Um, <laughs> um, who 
really moved me and brought me to tears. I thought, wow, these podcast things are really, really cool. So it was a very full circle moment for me when she came on. She's the only podcast guest of the 300, I don't know what we're up to now, who I've asked for a photo with because I th- we gain so much value from these people. They spend three hours with us. Not only do we get to watch the podcast live as it's happening from the from the green room above, we get to probably have a bit of conversation with them before and afterwards. And I often feel like a photo doesn't even come close to what we've what we've gained. So I've, and it, you don't want to interfere with some of these people's days. They've given you so much. It feels a bit crude and uncomfortable sometimes to ask for the photo. But Steve said like, she's obsessed with you. Like she's yeah. literally shaking. <laughs> she doesn't shake. And um, can can we get can we get a photo? And it, I've it's treasured treasured so photo. <laughs> it was, I think it marked a really full moment for me um, in your journey. And I think something we don't often do is sit back and look at those moments and celebrate enjoy them and breathe yeah. and think yeah. cool I've come quite far for that one like what's the next thing that we're going to aim for um so she was that person for me it was more than her it was more about kind of the full picture the full, yeah full yeah. circle vibe but it. one of my favorite episodes hands yeah, down I, I can remember that one actually on Stevens so it, de- it definitely stood out for me it's an incredible, incredible story incredible story so her grit and determination and passion and she's she, as we said she's not too much older than me she's done some incredible things and I find her yeah, up there in my inspiration. So that was really cool. Yeah, youngest fe- female billionaire. Is that right? Youngest female billionaire. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Crazy. Absolutely incredible. It's a girl, title. Girl done good. <laughs> <laughs> done good. Any sort of book recommendations that you you would give out for our audience, or any books that you sort of like hmm, that really has stood out for you? Yeah. One. Oh, there's two. One that if you work with people and don't judge the, so don't judge the book by its cover, don't judge the book by its title. <laughs> I love books like that. <laughs> um, I mean, you may, yeah, it's, it's a really famous book called Surrounded by Idiots. Mm. Um, change the game in understanding people's behavior, working relationships, um, how to best adapt your style to work with different um, personality styles. That just, that was the first time that that kind of world was opened up to me in terms of like human psychology and behavioral psychology. And it's, allowed me to optimize in so many ways how I work with my team and get the best out of people. And that was when that started the ball rolling for me on really, really caring deeply about how I can get the most out of my team because turns out doing it the way that you want it, you want it to be received <laughs> doesn't work for everyone. Yeah, and I have a team of all the different colored characteristics. So we do completely different one-to-ones now. We do completely different feedback sessions. We do completely different um, how I communicate with them. Some of them love the quick fire stuff, which I'm guilty of. Some of them need to be pulled and have a little conversation in person because actually the way it's gonna impact their day can be profound. So making sure you get those moments right is really important. And I gained so much from that book. The, sorry. I was gonna say, so when you say color characteristics would be perhaps, I don't know, green would be an introvert or red would be exactly there's so it's a i mean i won't say it as good as the book can yeah. but there's there's four different colored um personality types um red blue green and yellow and you can be a, a hybrid of a couple or you can be very leading in different ones, in different ones. and it's about how um a red gets on with a blue and a green gets on with a yellow etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. and it it just opened my eyes i was like that person is that one, that person is that one. Yeah. And it was so clear. Um, I think I'm a bit of a, like a hybrid of a couple, but really, really interesting. It allowed me just to look at things in a different way. And just as you grow and develop in your career, whatever you do, if you're freelancing by yourself, how do you deal with clients? You suddenly see them as okay, they're a green. I've had a briefing called they're a green. So I'm gonna treat them and do this in this way. And it will allow your working relationships in whatever capacity you mm. work in to be the best they possibly can. And isn't that like what we all want? We don't want to have horrible working it's relationships. Exactly, exactly the same as you were with your, your 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 job application at the start. It's like giving it, you're giving that relationship the best opportunity to thrive. Exactly. And I've been brought down by terrible working relationships. And you know, other jobs have really got to me because I just couldn't communicate with some people. It was like talking to a brick wall. Mm. But I really think this, and when I've gone, oh, it all makes sense. If they're doing that because they're this type of person and therefore I just need to go about it in this way. And I'm just that type of person. Like if I get started on something, like I'm, in it and I feel really like in that at the moment. The second book was um is one on creativity that was recommended to me really recently, which was fantastic and I can't remember what it was called. So <laughs> I'll come back to on that it. one. It'll come back. It'll come back. <laughs> I mean I'm just like I'm I'm a you're looking to, for, to me for say something <laughs> there, but I'm 
the one thing that just strikes me so much by you is just like your absolute passion and drive. Like I, I'm sure you're aware of it. It is infectious. It, it really comes across <laughs> oh, so you. so. Um, I don't know. How to, I don't quite know how to describe it. Like your <laughs> ambition and drive to 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 not just be the best, but to keep learning. I think mm. is also like is a really big thing for me here. I think a lot of people. I think we're all guilty of we talk about it in like creative industries and like people just get into their job they make that kind of leap or that transition into their job and then they go ah, I'm done I'm going to just stay in this lane and just going to carry on doing this thing but you don't seem to want to settle at all no um and that's I think that's a really incredible trait to have where you just kind of just keep wanting to soak things up and keep wanting to learn yeah there'd be a lot of people that would go and get the job that you had and just be oh, I'm in this job now great I've got it I'm just gonna do my thing but this kind of drive and desire to want to learn more and to be better and to manage a team and to grow like is is just quite incredible really oh that's very kind um i didn't really have a question there <laughs> it was it was merely oh, thank you. it was merely an observation um whilst eagle was looking at me going say something so i just thought i'd say it no and uh, I, I completely agree dave it's that sort of like sheer it, almost like it's a mix of obsessiveness but yeah. healthy obsessiveness and thank you and, <laughs> and, yeah, and, that's a yeah, great word for it. That's exactly it. So, so yeah, we love to finish the podcast with the great question of: um, Should you meet fourteen-year-old Grace today? And um, what sort of advice would you give to her, knowing what you know today? Has that book come back to you yet as well? <laughs> Oh God, I hate these moments because you're expecting something so profound. <laughs> no, no, no. It doesn't no. have to be. And we, love, we love it as well. We love the question because it literally, it brings all sorts of different answers. So For sure. It just yeah. gets your mind thinking. Yeah. Probably, I mean, as you've seen, I can talk for hours. Yeah. But um, what would I say to 14-year-old Grace? Not, I, you know, as I said earlier, like I went to a great school, but it was highly academic and we were all driven down that exact same path. And I actually, I don't think I even touched this because I've literally forgotten about it. But when it got to my A levels, I didn't get my, um, I didn't get my results. And I was always, we were highly results driven. And I was literally tossed to the side from results day onwards in terms of my school and my relationship, despite kind of being there my, my entire life. And, you know, I ended up, I think I got like A, I can't remember what I got. I got, I did really well. Like I got A, B, B or A, A, B. Like I did really well. But on that day, I felt like such a failure. And I mean, this is 17, you asked for 14, but just because they, people want you to be a certain model, want you to be a certain way, and you don't conform to that, or you don't fit in that, there's a whole world out there. And you don't have to fit into their mold and tick all their boxes because you're gonna tick your own boxes and find out mm. what they are anyway. And I just, I, I've been thinking about this a lot recently because I've been invited back to speak at my school and I'm trying to think what message can I tell these kind of younger girls um, who were going through, you know, these horrible exam periods of test and learn and test and learn and test and learn and recite and memorize and recite and memorize that it all goes down the drain as soon as you leave anyway. Sorry. And maybe don't tell them that when yeah. you go. Uh. I, I, practice, I practice with my mum. She goes, maybe just rein it in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just, I just think it's so important to know that even if you are in those, you know, those or university or whatever you're in in life, you're in a specific role, you don't have to stay and you don't have to do it. Like you can do your own thing and it's, this is not profound in the slightest. It's all gonna be okay in the end. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want it to be, if you really care and you really deep down, you know, you know you've got some fire down there somewhere, you're gonna find your way to letting it out somewhere. And, you know, I faced my own tons of rejection and literally results day, I was chucked into the library to phone some universities to try and see if anyone would take me through clearing which no one prepared me for. And I was literally tossed into the, don't get in the photographs, you know, you're, cry you're crying type of thing. Um, unbelievably sad, really. Uh, yeah, and I, and I di didn't even do that badly. Yeah. And, uh, but I felt, I felt like such a failure um, because I didn't conform to the mold of getting into university yeah. place on the day. I'd be inclined to go back there and just go, fuck you. I mean, <laughs> it's, at, it's on my mind. I, look at what I've done. It's on my mind. So I won't, rain it in. I won't yeah. lie, I won't lie. But yeah, and, and I, I, I just was so, I didn't realize there were other roads I could go down. Yeah. yeah. And I don't even know if going back there, I'll think it's cool or as you kind of said, mm -hmm. like inspiring that I'm doing what I'm doing because it's not your traditional roles and it's not your traditional careers. Mm. Um, 
that you're pushed down to do. And I believe still they, these girls are, and that's, and that's okay. Like different worlds were good, but um, I just think knowing that and like knowing it's gonna be okay. And like, if you do have that deep down fire, cause I knew I had this passion and this fire. So to feel like a failure on that day when I thought I, like I knew I wanted to do cool things. And I knew yeah. I wanted to do, do good. Turn that into a motivation. Hundred percent. Actually, that failure 100%. and being made to feel like that has been turned. You've cha- you are you've obviously channeled it. Hundred percent. I think it fueled me from that day onwards. I went and I, fe- I again the way I approach everything. I, I had my cry. I went up to the library. I got the phone book and I worked my way through. And when I got an offer from one of them, I went, "I'll call you back because I'm just going to check if this one's got me an offer as well." Because I thought, like, what have you got to lose at this yeah. point? Mm-hmm. Um, and I wish I could. You know, I had the best. You know, despite not doing anything with my degree literally um obviously you gain so much from university experience and i wouldn't change that for the world i had the best university experience i learned so much and everything that's happened as a result has guided me in some way into where i've ended up today like i do genuinely believe like everything happens for a reason and if someone could just told me that on that day i think it would have been it would have taken the weight off a little bit Um, maybe maybe you going back to that school that will be your message yeah full circle moment let those other people know that it's not the end of the line if it doesn't quite work out. Exactly. Yeah. That's and all. That's the only message I want to get across. And I just want to say it's 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 going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Yeah. No matter being tossed to the side. No matter what the looks you're getting from those teachers. No matter the fact that no one wants to you know give you eye contact because you've failed. You're going to be okay. And there's yeah. not one way to succeed. Like everyone's definition of. I mean, this is a whole another topic. Yeah. Everyone's definition of success is different. And just because you don't fit that doesn't mean you won't be successful in something else. Yeah. And that, that education journey doesn't end at sixth form. Like, <laughs> just, really, just, just, just the beginning. Begins. Just begins. Really just the beginning. Um, but yeah, I think we, I think a lot of us have that relationship and that experience with school, don't we? You know, as, you know, from, we've talked about it before, like coming from creative backgrounds, you know, you kind of, like the arts world and design is still kind of neglected and, and ignored. Like you're still made to feel like you've got to be, you know, like you kind of said about reciting, just, you know, learning reciting it learning reciting it it's like that just you can't apply that to a, a career in in a creative industry yeah um but the creative industry is huge and there's there's a huge huge amount of work out there that's incredibly powerful and fulfilling and enjoyable and you know yeah i mean i feel like we could talk about this this experience for a whole other hour but we probably want to wrap it up don't we indeed Anything you want to say, Igor? Any closing no. notes? Do you want to just say thank you to Grace? And... <laughs> She's been amazing, hasn't she? I'm so I'm so glad you I'm so glad you came. So glad this, you came up here. This is our vibe. This is our vibe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so your mum's like, say thank you to grandparents. <laughs> I'll pinch you on the back of his arm. Hit the ribs. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm just I'm I'm just gonna read my new book, surrounded by Sam. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, no. Where can people find you? Um, not I'm, like literally find uh, yeah, you, I'm not you know. My um, um, at the dot social climber on Instagram, I'm just Grace Andrews on LinkedIn, and yeah, that's about it. I don't have um, any paid services as such at the moment, but I, as I said, use those pages as my platform for experimentation, and I love to share value and advice and guidance and all of that sort of thing when it comes to social media. Yeah, so, people yeah. should absolutely follow you. Follow your account yeah, for that. It's, it's great. Like, great we, tips you know, there and. Yeah. Yeah, it's been really inspiring. Thank you very much for giving us your time. It's been um it's been great to hear your journey. Um and and I don't even think it's you know it's this, barely started. This is barely started. <laughs> it's getting started. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> you you're moving in the right direction, absolutely, for sure. So thank you very much. Really thank appreciate you. your time. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Grace. Woo!